All right, you've seen this, uh, you've seen this slide before. Um, this is the uh, slide that Sashi brought uh, this morning at the, uh, at the opening. Um, and our platform is supporting these six primary products. And I'm going to talk to you today about the roadmap for these products. If we operate an intelligent platform, these six primary products, prior authorization, intelligent medical records, our clearinghouse plus plus, digital mailroom claims, and provider data management. So I'll share those exciting roadmap developments for each of these areas, but we're going to take a special deep dive into prior authorization. And I've heard a lot of chatter today about prior authorization, a lot of questions, um, and people are sort of seeing that as one of the, uh, the biggest opportunities or the great frontiers where automation and AI can help. Uh, so that's why we're taking a deep dive today. Okay. Um, so over the years, we've built a unique automation platform that uh, millions and millions of healthcare transactions move through each and every day. Um, now, uh, this is kind of an eye chart that you're seeing here, and I'm not going to go through it or explain it all to you, but I think it's a pretty good visual representation of what we do and how we do it. Um, now, what's special about our platform is it's a completely integrated design. Um, our products are not, you know, completely siloed, uh, you know, systems that don't ever talk to each other uh, or share the data or share the, you know, or share their capabilities. Um, you know, it's completely integrated. All uh, transactions, documents, everything is processed via any kind of channel you can imagine. So it's coming in from a mail room, that's our digital mail room, faxes, APIs, uploads, everything you can imagine, and it's pulled together, and those products, they share the AI capabilities, they share the automation capabilities. So when we develop an AI capability for one product, now another one can actually leverage that on the, on the platform. And that fits together in the most streamlined way, streamlined way possible. So for example, um, and there was a statistic earlier this morning, but uh, our clearinghouse and digital mail, right, they, they unify the routing, editing, business rules, and delivery of claims for our customers that have chosen to combine them together. Um, and uh, what they see out of that is you know, a lot of efficiencies um, and uh, uh, you know, a unified place for, for business editing, routing, the rest of it. So this is how our platform works. Um, everything is, is, uh, is integrated. Now, we'll talk about the intelligent medical records a little bit. Um, and in fact, um, if you didn't get a chance to attend the breakout session with uh, John Green, um, I recommend doing that tomorrow and seeing because uh, he'll tell the story of the intelligent med medical records uh, and how they've impacted his organization. But if you're not familiar, this product is reducing clinical review times in claims processes by up to 50% as we're measuring it. And it does so by automating the summary and the structuring of, you know, complex, redundant patient record data. We've all seen these documents in various processes. Um, and it's really a job for AI to go through and make sense of a lot of this stuff and specialized clinical AI. Um, so it can organize, create a table of contents. Um, it's truly a great application of large language models, perfect, in fact, in, in natural language processing. Now, in addition to the automated summaries, the automated table of contents, the clickable hypertext, uh, soon you're going to be able to interact with these patient charts using a natural language chatbot style interface. Now we heard about before um, the, uh, the notebook, uh, LM, the Google product, where you can upload the contract and ask questions. Well, imagine the same thing for a patient chart, a medical record, a much more complex document, right? Um, than uh, a typical contract. So we're bringing that and we're going to have that in quick claim. So you would just ask a question like, you know, does the patient have a family history of heart disease? And it's going to come back with an instant answer and say, you know, yes or no. Here's the relevant section of the record that I found my answer in. Go look at it, right? Um, it's kind of like a, like a private chat GPT for medical records. Uh, we're really excited about developing this. I've seen the demo of it. We hope to um, you know, be able to share more of it soon, um, but uh, it, it's pretty amazing. We're also going to be adding the ability to generate like a complete chronology view of the record. 
And you know, those dates are so important and understand the context of those dates, but we can organize the patient's history from that record into a viewable, clickable timeline, right, their journey. And then finally, we are expanding the product to you know, new use cases like a bill review use case. It's actually a perfect use case for us since uh, you know, we process a ton of bills, itemized bills, uh, et cetera. Um, and so we're gonna unite that all together into one place and it's gonna be leveraging the platform for decision support and it'll maximize productivity, right? We're bringing those things together. Bill review is a targeted use case and, and uh, we can't wait to bring it. So that's intelligent medical records and where we're headed in the next, uh, in the next year. So we're gonna do a poll. And if you wanna scan that QR code, we're just interested in your thoughts for what would you like to see prioritized? Like what's the most important thing there? Like what's the thing that would get you the most excited about this product that you would wanna see first? Um, so I guess we'll give it a couple of minutes, um, maybe rank these uh, on the app, and then I don't know, you know if we take like a live look or something, but it should be interesting. Yep, we do. So what you're gonna see is in a minute on the screen, we'll be able to see how you guys are responding in terms of how you order, rank order these in order of importance to you, for you and your organization. So you can see right now, interactive chat bot is at the top, bill review is second, and uh, chronology is third. And we've flipped twice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like okay. it's election okay. night or something. You know? I know. <laughs> Who's gonna win? It's a close I'm race. Watching. <laughs> We'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that. We really appreciate the feedback. While, while you're doing that, I'll also share with you that one of the things that I um, am excited to be bringing in 2025 is a um, you know, voice of the customer, customer advisory council. Um, so some of you will get outreach from us um, to ask for your participation in that. We want to be able to build your voice into our products um, even more so than we do today. We, it's already a huge source. Um, of input for, for product development, um, but we're gonna be asking for that uh, as well. Okay. Well, it looks like the poll results are in. Is everyone about, about fit? Is anybody else still working? Okay, all right, I think we have our answer. Bill reviews at the top. Chat I did not predict that. This, this is really, Ooh. this is amazing. I love it. Awesome. All right. All right. Next, let's talk about Clearinghouse, or more specifically, Clearinghouse Plus Plus. So I'll explain what Clearinghouse Plus Plus means in a minute, but uh, bears repeating, Sashi talked about it this morning. Our Clearinghouse has grown by leaps and bounds this past year. And the most special thing about it that more and more customers are discovering is its ability to serve as a highly flexible transaction gateway, more than just a clearinghouse that passes transactions back and forth. And it's completely integrated with all the other document flows via the platform that we just showed. And we're supporting automation of transaction flows that traditional clearinghouses don't really touch. Good example of that being the 834 enrollment transaction, right? Um, and you know, uh, you heard uh, there's another breakout session uh, with Jeff Baki, and if you didn't make that today, you can go tomorrow. Um, and so that's what Clearinghouse Plus Plus is. Um, transactions like PBM integrations, right? Um, that's stuff like eligibility and accumulator trading. Um, we're doing all that within our environment, and it's more complicated, and there's more data conversions, and it's just, it's really extending our clearinghouse and automation capabilities into more and more transaction types. Well, anyway, this year we're adding more enhanced dashboards, uh, so you can get valuable insights into the volume trends, things like submitter issues, rejects. We're also expanding our support for electronic attachments as well, really pushing hard with our um, trading partners, um, to get these uh, uh, electronic attachments, more of them sourced. 
Of course, we want partnership with our payer clients as well to say, hey, sign me up for that, right? Hook me up. Well, you're already processing my digital mailroom and my imaging. Plug in the, uh, the electronic attachments from the clearinghouse so that I can turn more of that paper into electronic. We're also adding a focus on provider-facing capabilities. Um, we're very strong, uh, actually, on the, um, on the payer side of the transaction. And in fact, our portal has become a, a real favorite for the providers that are using it because they say it's easier to use for the claim submissions and the rejection management and the tracking and the auditing. Um, you know, but we're really going to go out there with it and build upon that. Um, so we're taking it to the next level. Um, what providers really want uh, in a clearinghouse is revenue cycle management, right? They want uh, faster payment, cleaner claims. And, you know, payers want cleaner claims as well and fewer stops in the process. So we're going to have things like uh, automated timely filing workflows, um, pre-submission payment estimation, uh, various analysis reports, put those into the hands of the providers so that you know, they can fully migrate and you know, use our portal for what they love it for, but also get a lot more value out of it. And that's going to result in, like I said, cleaner claims, faster payments, and uh, that benefits everybody. And I think Larry, our clearinghouse director, is going to be around later on. So uh, you know, definitely hit him up and talk to him about this stuff. But if we were to take a poll, <laughs> and we will, what, it, what do we think, right? If we kind of look at some of these things, you know, um, when you think about a clearinghouse, a, a best-in-class clearinghouse, a clearinghouse that you want to be working with, uh, what's most important to you? Vote now. I feel like we need Jeopardy music. Yeah, yeah th that would have been great if we, if we would have had the Jeopardy theme. Do, 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 <laughs> This is so interesting. It's not what I would have guessed. I know. I'm surprised, too. Yeah. This is why we asked the question. You know what you need more than we do. So on this thing, can you switch your vote after you've made it? Or like once you've made it, it's like you're done, you're in. Yep, you're done. OK. I just didn't know if people were like you know, going back and forth, being indecisive. <laughs> or voting, voting. <laughs> yeah, I see, you. I mean, I guess I see you somebody can... with two cell phones over there. That's, you know, <laughs> that's not allowed. All right, who's still working? All right, I think we're good. Claim scrubbing, when's the day? Woo. All right. <laughs> Noted. All right. What's next? Digital mail room. Digital mail room is, you know, most of you know about it. It's our best in class digital mail room capability that we bring, that our platform delivers. Hands down, the most advanced uh, uh, an automated solution for document intake, sorting, data capture, business editing, routing, delivery, you name it. Um, and it's been a big area of growth for us this year as well. We're really doubling down on our investments in the AI capability in this area uh, for document processing. Now, we can already automatically identify and sort hundreds of common healthcare document types. Uh, in a way that's really changed the game, um, wherein we're just taking all these rules, you know, out of manual processing um, uh, requirements and just putting them into machine modeling. And it's, you know, uh, tightening the turnaround times. It's allowing us to scale it. Um, and so everybody that's taking advantage of it is, is seeing the impact. But we're going to continue to expand that. We have a long way to go on that. We can do more sorting. We can do more automation. We can do more identification. We can do more image cleanup. Um, you know, the technology is it's advancing, you know, it, it, as fast as we can implement it, right? As fast as we can adopt it and put it into our digital mailroom. We're also going to be delivering, you know, better data capture by integrating the large, uh, the integrating the latest large language model technology. This is actually amazing. So, and, and it, 
as much as I'd like to take credit for it, it wasn't my idea. So <laughs> one, of our, um, one of our engineers, um, our AI engineers, um, came up with this idea and said, you know, OCR, um, we love it, right? It's great, but it's kind of reached its peak as a technology in a way, right? Like where are the innovations in, in traditional OCR approaches? Well, you know, we have to move beyond that, and we are moving beyond that to take it in the AI realm. Um, and one of the things you can do with large language models is you can drive accuracy in OCR results by making it context aware, right? You can take an ambiguous OCR result where maybe you would have had to do a, a, a human intervention to confirm something, and the large language model can look at it and say, well, based on everything I'm seeing around it, um, I think uh, that the answer is this, right? And we could do that with a high degree of accuracy. And that just wasn't possible before. <laughs> and so we're actually uh, putting LLM technology into, um, or language model technology, into the capture process. Um, we haven't done it yet. This is still a roadmap item. Uh, we're still testing it and proving it out. But it, it should be a significant advance for us. Um, and then document intelligence capabilities are also going to continue to grow. We're tapping into the latest modeling architectures that are out there. They can quickly recognize indexable data and unstructured healthcare documentation and correspondence. And when you do things like add uh, intelligent uh, sentiment analysis and image recognition, that creates a lot of new options for automated business rules, workflow routing, things like that. So as I mentioned, as the technology and the capabilities become available, we say, what can we do with that? And how can it improve our processes? So you know, it's just going to become more and more AI-based, the digital mailroom, more than it already is, which is a lot. All right. Claims. We'll talk about claims. Here's what's coming up for claims. So we've been helping customers streamline their claims operations for years. But we're also realizing there still exists a massive technology opportunity. And so we're taking the next steps to extend our automation platform. You know, um, it just sort of goes up to the edge of the claims process adjudication. We're going to extend that out, right, and cover it. Um, and we're going to connect it from end to end uh, for the intake and reporting functions. So for example, RPA, robotic process automation, you know, it's a technology that several have implemented. We have the capability as well. Um, and we can make backlogs uh, in the process a thing of the past by combining our platform with the RPA to extend it and drive the automation downstream. So it starts with our staff doing a deep dive process uh, analysis. Um, and of course, you, you, know, you would do this, but uh, our staff uh, is familiar with every different kind of adjudication platform. We've seen a lot of different operations, the efficiencies, the inefficiencies. We can identify the automations and the opportunities that, uh, that get the claims out the door faster and keep the staff working. And then we work to implement those, right? Um, we'll implement them on the RPA platform, and then we'll connect it to the intake process for the clearinghouse and digital mailroom. Another challenge that uh, operations are going to face, claims operations, is just like the logistics of the work management, right? We're talking about uh, the inventory, the prioritization, the assignment, uh, the tracking, uh, you know, everything that comes about. Um, you know, various uh, platforms and various external tools might have different capabilities, but what we're doing is we're integrating that into QuickClaim itself. So QuickClaim has strong workflow capabilities, strong tracking capabilities. And for our operations, we're moving it all into QuickClaim. So be able to see that. And that means that we can provide the reporting, we can provide the real-time inventory, and we can actually even drive more advanced work assignment and work routing within the platform by doing either an R uh, RPA or API integration, and then make that visible into QuickClaim. And finally, our teams are identifying upstream editing and intake automation that's going to drive fewer errors and pens in the process. Um, you know, traditionally, uh, you know, wherein we would be handing off the transaction and saying, okay, it's good, it's clean, it's wonderful, but what happens after that, you know, how much, uh, how much are we really connecting those things? Um, and so we're closing that gap. It means we'll be able to configure our automated clearinghouse and digital mailrooms specifically to drive efficiency in the claims process, because we'll have a 360 degree view of it. And that's our strategy for claims.
Now I want to hit on provider data management. And this is one of the product areas that we're really excited about. Sasha talked about it this morning. I'm excited to talk about it again. Particularly the 1099 compliance automation solution. Now, we built, we've been doing, handling the 1099, you know, for several years, but we've built an entirely new and fully automated process now. It's ready to go for tax year 2024 filings. Uh, in fact, we've been putting, th putting it through its paces for um, some of the mid-year volume that we've been processing this year. It's performing great. And we're going to be automating every single component. And that goes from the IRS database checks for data quality, data correctness, the entire W-9 request and intake process, and then all the way down to the e-filing. So what we're doing is we're making sure that that data is accurate through every automated means we can. Now, that solution truly solves for the typically labor-intensive uh, uh, task and the financial risk of non-compliance that payers deal with every year, right? I've heard stories, right, saying, we got fined, right? We heard from the IRS, we got a fine because our data wasn't good. And, you know, it's, it's so much work to try to figure out how to make that data good, and we just have to rely on um, this or that. Okay, well, we're taking it all away. You know, we're making sure that the data is good so that you could vo avoid the fines. And additionally, we're continuing to expand our portfolio of adjudication platform integrations, wherein we're supporting real-time uh, claim provider matching uh, and automated maintenance. So uh, we have uh, amazing provider matching algorithms, um, and uh, we're able to pre-match and then integrate with the system to, to, to do the ads. And the impact of the adjudication backlog is going to be significant for that. And actually, we've already seen it for the customers that we've implemented for, um, because we can eliminate um, uh, costly and, and time-consuming pens in the system by doing this. So provider data management, we've got a lot of capability there. We're excited about that, especially the 1099 and the, uh, and the ongoing provider maintenance and matching. So um, you know, if you have questions about that, we'll talk about that later. Um, our, our product manager, Tracy, is here, and she'll be happy to discuss. All right, zooming out a little. Our intelligent platform. So our platform itself on which all these products rest, it has a roadmap of its own. And one of the most significant items that we're putting on that roadmap and that we're working on this year is a completely new and next generation reporting capability. Um, it's going to be an extension of Quick Claim's built-in reporting. And it's going to be fully integrated. This is what we like to Microsoft Power BI. We looked and said, OK, Microsoft Power BI, you know, Fantastic, best in class uh, data visualization, um, data reporting, analysis, configuration platform, and we're going to hook into that. And what that's going to allow is um, it's going to allow extremely quick, configurable reports, um, flexible data visualizations that we're going to be able to deliver. And the team's even working on integrating that to our customers' um, Microsoft tenants, right? So within your own Microsoft 365 tenant, you can have access to the data from your uh, SDS workflows. And that's really cool. Now, we're also upping our customer support game. And we're going to be building out enhanced ticketing experience. We recently moved our support ticketing platform to Salesforce because uh, it actually uh, offered the opportunity to realize uh, a lot of the features that we and our customers really have wanted for a long time in the ticketing. And we chose Salesforce for that reason. Um, we're putting it together now. So we've already integrated on the back end, and we're doing things like automated ticket assignment on the back end with Salesforce. Um, but we're bringing that to the front end as well. Uh, so we're finishing the first phase of that right now, actually. You'll see it soon, wherein within Quick Claim, you'll be able to get visibility and tracking into your tickets. That'll be phase one. And then after that, just a completely interactive experience where all your tickets can be managed uh, via Quick Claim. You don't have to go to a third party site. We can move it out of the emails. Um, I think it's going to be much more convenient for everybody. Um, and it should drive you know, faster responsiveness, better visibility in our ticketing. And finally, we're taking a huge step. And for the very first time, we're extending our platform through a technology partnership with Basis AI. Um, you're going to learn a little bit more about Basis AI in a few minutes. Um, but Basis AI has created a truly best-in-class AI capability for 
um, understanding, intelligent understanding of medical policies, clinical decision support. And when we saw the technology, we really just sort of knew we had to bring it to our customers, right? We say, this is something we, we want to bring to them. Uh, and that's why we brought, uh, we brought Amber here, Amber Nigam, uh, the CEO of, and co-founder, and he's going to be present with us today. And we'll bring him out in just a moment. I have one final word on the roadmap. And it's how we approach it, how we think about it, what all the inputs are. Now, he'll be up in a moment. Um, we take a number of perspectives uh, and information sources into account. We're thinking about the product roadmap. And one of those is just market intelligence, the market intelligence we can access using relationships uh, with expert analyst partners like Everest and Class. Uh, these partners, they have a really both broad and deep understanding of the healthcare landscape, and we rely on them uh, regularly, actually, to keep us informed, and we ideate together on uh, new ways that SDS can bring value. Uh, we also highly rely on the voice of the customer. Um, and you, you heard April talk about some of our efforts that we're going to be pushing forward there as well. But our client and partner uh, and delivery partners will always stay close, listen and understand where our customers are at, what their challenges are, what their needs are. This drives a lot of development, development requests, SOWs, and that helps shape the product and the platform through the course of that. And of course, we hear from you at industry events like this. Tons of feedback, and we're going to be organizing that uh, as well, as April mentioned. Now, for anybody, and including us, regulatory activity is also an input. Uh, it definitely keeps us all on our toes, and our compliance department keeps a close eye on developments, like things like uh, CMS rulemaking, and uh, our engineers are always ready to implement the latest uh, mandated standards and in interoperability. So this allows us to anticipate, be ready to address needs proactively um, as we see them coming, uh, as they're driven by regulatory requirements. Finally, I want to mention how emerging technologies play an important role in the development. As technologists, as AI folks, you know, we just pay attention to the technology for its own sake, and then we think, that's really cool. How can that bring value to our product? How can that be better in our product and our platform? And they're really happening so fast right now, it's hard to keep up, and there's really no shortage of things. So we've got a, uh, you know, a backlog of things we want to bring into the environment and integrate into, uh, uh, in, into the product. Um, and that includes uh, security tools as well. We take the same approach, as I mentioned before. We can't wait to implement the next technology into our security program. Um, so sometimes we do see something new that's so cool and useful, we got to have it. Um, at the end of the day, that's kind of who we are and why we love doing this. So that's our approach. This is how we think about the product development. Mm -hmm.